It's early spring, you know, it's uh, mid-March. Got the water levels go way down in March. A lot of fish are moving through the system, We're getting some big ones, hopefully it's some holes. But you know, it's uh, just great fishing this time of year. And it's all indicators, so it's all fishing nymphs. So I go to the big holes, and these ones here, I'm using that fly right now. My little, uh, just little jig, little Euro jig, works great in the shallow water and then when I hit the big holes I'll put on a chronomid because there's a ton of midges coming off so it should be an exciting day but we'll wait and see so that's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly back to COVID stuff Just the next cast in this run, holy cow. Yeah, they're on, on that jig. Oh, and this is another nice one. And they're holding right now in about five feet of water. Actually, I can see the bottom. It's probably max five feet of water. You can see there's a deep hole behind me. And what these fish do is they slide out of that deep hole and slide up in these runs to feed. Especially when there's a midge hatch. And there's a real nice midge hatch going on right now. I've had some blue wing olives come off, which is good, because once the blue wing olives start moving, you know, even though they're size 18, a lot of these big fish will feed. And it makes it real nice when they come up to feed, because you're going you're gonna to get quite a few. Let's see if I can get this guy, and this one's, this one's a beautiful. This one's a dandy. Get them here. Oh. It's heavy when they're heavy fish and they're in this current. This guy is. Whoa. He's not easy. Come on. He's a big one. Oh. Yeah. It's tough in this current, too. You got these big currents in the Columbia, which make it really tough. To get these big boys in, but oh, there he is. There, oh, again, this is on a small nymph, and I'll show everybody. I showed everybody the nymph, but these big fish are moving. There's the nymph right in the, right in the part of the moat. Look at that. There's a that's a dandy fish. There it goes. So, that was just actually the next cast. I think I'm gonna get quite a few sitting out here. My fly's getting a little beat up, but you know, they last pretty good. It's just got some uh, some of the ice pink dubbing, which makes it really nice. So I just pick off, you know, it gets a little beat up. But it still lasts, as long as you have the tail, it's got the body, the ice dubbing you lose a little bit of, but that's the beauty of jig flies. You can just take them back to the bench every time. So that's the guy right there. You need lots of these. Then I'll show everybody what I'm doing when I'm casting. I'm just essentially casting straight upstream. I gotta cut off some of that thread. Casting straight up, letting it dead drift, and just waiting for the fish to eat it. So I'll get it out there again, see if I can get another. <laughs> Two casts later, and there's another. It's uh <laughs> it's on. It's a cold day, you know, it's probably only get to uh, plus 10, 11 today, Celsius. But these fish are feeding and you get all kinds. So you've seen the big buck, I've got a real nice chrome. Here's a smaller one. 
But again, chrome guys feed them too, so they're all stacked through here. Trying to get this one in. This one's just a small one. Yeah. Right there. Nice, nice fish. Nice bow. Wow, it is just on fire right now. And once you find them, they tend to stack in certain areas. So again, in shallow water, they weren't there. Just white fish sitting in that shallow or calmer water. But out here in this faster water, there's a lot of fish moving. So we'll see if we can get some more. So there's kind of the run. You can see it starts right up at the head. So all the way up at the head, it's really shallow water. So as the water warms, the fish will sit way up in the head end. And then as it's since the water's so cold, they just sit back here in the hole. So you can see it's not very deep. You know, I don't know if the polarizer can pick it up, but I'm probably fishing four to five feet of water. You can see the midges. You know, the midges are hatching on the water. We've had some bluing, all this flow down, which is good, which gets the fish triggered. And all through this run, it can vary anywhere from three to eight feet. So out in that main run, it gets out to about eight feet deep and that's where some of the big boys will hold so you know you can get them on the nymph i fish the nymph uh solely when the water's cold and then i'll move to the bugger once it starts warming up but that is the run we're fishing right here it's just beautiful and look at the midges hatching lots of midges coming off and that just gets the fish cranked up big fish eat small food items so what i'm doing just casting my fly directly upstream so you can see up in this pocket, just casting up in there, and then just letting it dead drift. And again, I'll take another cast. So essentially, cast it up, let that fly sink, and just watch your, you know, just stay in tune with your line, try to get a dead drift, and just watch that indicator. And if the indicator goes down, you've got a fish. Very rarely do you hook bottom with the jigs. The jigs are, are very good without hooking bottom. So again, just cast straight up. And I work different areas. I move in, move out, and just try to get cover as much water as you can. You know, because with the nymph, fish won't move far with that cold water. They won't move too far to grab the nymph, so it's got to float essentially in front of them. So all you're trying to do is just stay in one spot for, for quite a bit and work in here up there and then all the way across and then move again slide up or down just keep changing the water because fish will be in different zones and i always try to match i'll go through my setup but i'm trying to match a boat i always put on a boat two feet more than i'm fishing so if i'm fishing you know five feet of water right now four to five feet i've got six to seven feet got my uh, indicators placed at because I want that fly bouncing along the bottom. Ooh, that, was a, that was a bump. I want it bouncing. I don't want to really, I want it dead drifting, but I also want it bouncing near the bottom. I want to put that in front of the fish. Because again, when the water's cold, the fish won't move too far for it. Ooh, ow, that's cool. I missed it. Again, it up. And again, keep pulling it back. And just so you're not pulling your hook, but you want to make sure you don't have any slack in that line. Because when that fish hits like that, oh, you want to strike. There's a lot of fish up in here right now. Look at that beautiful one. It's just gorgeous and it's full of fish. And not small fish, there we go. And not small fish either. Oh, there's a nice one. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Almost jumped in the boat. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> And he got off. Everybody hopefully saw that hook up. Oh my God. It's just unreal. They're just stacked in here. And uh, you know, I just, it's what a great day. I'm just nymphing. Like I said, I'm just nymphing all through here. I've only hit this one area. I've worked about a, uh, a small area, just essentially just around me within, you know, 40, 50 foot casts. I've got this whole run to work. I'll probably today, realistically could catch 15 to 20 fish just in this one spot that's how many rainbows move up to feet it's fantastic this river world class so i'm gonna keep trying it i'm gonna keep showing everybody and see if i can get some more takes there's another one. Oh man this one's a good one i just changed positions 
I moved upstream a little bit. And this guy hit it. Man. Huh. Always tough when you uh, when you get them in this big flow. Tough to get in. I don't want to move position. I mean, I can drop. I've got an auto anchor right now. Got my Minkota going. I don't want to lose this position because all the fish are out in the zone. Oh, another dandy. Like they are just on the nymph. And I'm going to show everybody the setup. You've got to use, like, when the water's cold, especially, you know, when they're not moving for buggers, when they're not moving for streamers, you've got to remember when the water's really cold, the fish are a little lethargic. I mean, they bite great, but it's still only 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's like 4 degrees C, and that's cold water. And the fish won't move far to feed. So when you're fishing streamers and you're fishing, you know, big flies, big bulldogs, you miss to put it right in front of the face, they're not going to take it and they're not going to move for them. So nymphing is just a killer technique. It's a great way to catch them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big fish. Oh, what a fight. Oh, man. Tough to get them in this current. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so that's what happens. So I'm trying to hold the camera. I'm trying to land the fish in a big current. It's probably, a, you know, it's a good 20 plus inch rainbow. Oh. Anything to have a camera crew right now would be fantastic. But it's just the way it is. The way I got to do it for a bit. So anyways, uh, let, yeah, let me set up the camera again. I'll go through the setup for everybody. So let's go through the setup. Of course, we've got this uh, beautiful hardy reel. You know, you can't beat them. These are, these are unreal. I got a nice uh, hardy rod. I prefer the 10 foot six weights. I mean, this is a 10 foot six. It's really my indicator setup. And I also have a, a, a 10 foot five weight for lakes. I really prefer the long rods. I think I said this on numerous shows. Long rods, wide open loops, easy to cast indicators and heavier flies. So I've put on a 12 foot leader and just a normal tapered 12 foot leader. I go down to my swivel. So I got a normal swivel on there, just a, you know, I don't even know the size, just a decent size, doesn't matter if it's silver, copper, regardless. And then I've got another max, you know, few feet, few feet to my fly. And again, the preferred fly, any kind of uh, Euro jig right now works great. Uh, any kind of nymphs that you prefer, you know, the, the other, other nymphs I like, the purple, Don's purple, uh, beadhead, any of those kind of prince nymphs work great, but the jigs work really good. And then just peg. So I'm fishing right now four to five feet of water. So there's about five feet there, another foot. So really, i got to peg to about six feet. I've got to peg two feet longer than the depth I'm fishing. Because you've got to remember, you cast out, the fly goes down, it trails along a little bit, but you want it bouncing on the bottom. And that's the beauty of these jigs. Every time you feel bottom, you could pull it without getting hooked up and have it bounce along the bottom. So always peg it at least a foot or two, if not even more, even three feet deeper than the water, especially when you got a good flow. If you got the more flow you have, the probably the more you want to give it. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just casting straight up, covering that water. I'm working straight up and then methodical. Straight up like 12 o'clock, then 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you know, 3. And just keep working, move up a bit, work it down. And when you're nymphing, you have to work the runs effective. So let's go. Cool. I've just started. I've already landed, well, I've caught about four or five, landed a couple. So we're doing pretty good. There's another one. I'm trying to show everybody how I'm getting them in. They are tough in here. Whoa. Oh, so tough. Boy. There it flies out. Another dandy. Look, there are all these fish are 18 to 24 inches. Look at that. Like they're just gorgeous fish. There they go. Healthy. There. Flies out. You know, and that's a uh, that's my 24 inch Moby right there. And I've had ones, uh, you know, fish today that have filled that, that have bent over. You know, that one big buck was bent over. And you're gonna get anywhere 
from 18 inch through to you know as big as you want like up to 26 i've had them 28 uh, i know guys have got them over 30 inches my biggest out of here is 14 pounds so you just never know it's just a fantastic fishery oh and my auto anchor lost i have to move back in position but let's move back in and i'll get some more i want to take a minute and show everybody the fly so <laughs> essentially that one has landed or caught at least 12 to 14 fish so far today so it is just beat up so i gotta change it up but here are some of the patterns now everybody wants to see a fly box always so i've got some of these jigs that a friend of mine gave me i can't even remember where they came from but i haven't used these yet i'm waiting for the caddis hatch to start i think this would be just a killer for the caddis hatch i've got my small little uh these ones i use when the caddis are coming off actually it's caddis nymphs but right now this is the mainstay and you know it was really nice todd Oshi, world-class angler probably one of the best anglers he's i don't know how many world championships he's been to he does the north american lock style the guy is just a magic man when it comes to fishing he does it all and he gave me one of these nymphs one time he said it was uh somebody called it the omg nymph uh, i can't remember i think it was uh, aggie fritz somebody online mentioned it and said that looks like an omg well he gave me one of these that looked very similar to this it had the pink with uh you know kind of an orangey body to it well i've made some mods you know i mod of course you always modify i modified them with all these euro styles so these are the heavy heavy you know the the big big uh, beads on them the heaviest beads and then i've got the smaller ones with the one eights and even smaller beads on you know down to 764th on some of these but these are the main ones i'm using now so you've got to have the euro style jigs to get you to the bottom i put 0.025 lead on there with the big bead these go down to the bottom like a rock so you need these when the caddis come off i use a lot of these patterns and when i'm fishing the holes with the coronamids i like to use these uh, mayfly small emergers like caddis and mayfly emerger type styles works great along with the coronamids so these are kind of the mainstay on this side that's the mainstay you need for springtime fishing that's what you gotta have <laughs> hate to say it but there's another one. Oh man, I just slid up a little bit more and I'm into more fish. This whole run is full. And I'm the only guy out on the water. It's crazy. Well, the beauty is with this cold water, they do fight good. They're, they don't bite as, as easily, but they sure fight good. Another chrome bullet. There he goes. <laughs> well, I hate to say it, but I'm about I'm about an hour into fishing. Landed six now, hooked about uh, eight or nine, and I think everybody, I think that's enough. I, I'll, unless I hook another big one, I'll kind of cut it off for now. But that's kind of the idea. This fly is just. It's caught in that many fish, it's just beat up. It's getting battered up. But again, you got to have them. Hope everybody enjoyed the footage. Uh, I mean, if I do get a big one, I will I'll put it on again. But I'm going to sit in here for the next hour, catch another, uh, you know, six, eight, ten fish. Head back in by four, watch a little curling. Life is good. So hope everybody enjoyed it. Take care, conserve your waters. See you next time when we take a sport fishing on the fly. COVID stuff. Remember, you got to have this. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.